Cats, Cops, and C4. Okay, so the Shroud has, at the very least, a deep familiarity with the hospital's filing system and the ability to hack into it, Linda remarks, or the power to make public inquiries and understands how to get through the hospital system. We'll have an easier time of this if we're allowed to ask directly, Chink remarks. Well, we can't because we're too close to it, Vera grumps out. Too close my ass. We should be out there and hunting down the shroud with a DNA tracker and a plasma cannon. The bitch has been attacking us. Which is exactly why we can't be on the case except for general data collecting and organizing. It's personal for us. If there's going to be a proper arrest and imprisonment, there can't be a doubt that the officers involved were impartial and acting properly. Then in that case, the entire station is compromised. I won't pretend to be the most popular person around, but there's a serious gang mentality in the precinct. The girls out there are out for blood. Chank replies as he leans against the door to the office. He can hear a good chunk of the station with just a tiny amount of axiom running through his ears. Which, to be fair, is something I want to do as well. It's one thing to fuck me over, but to keep screwing when I'm asleep? Fuck no. You want to hunt her down too? Yes, of course. Letting someone screw you over and live just encourages bad habits. Chank answers before sighing. Unfortunately, we have to do this quick before the apprentice and whatever army of spies, assassins, and interrogators he drags along for the ride get too far ahead. Unfortunately, we've come up to the limit of what we're supposed to investigate. I'm sending off what we know to the other teams, but I don't think it will lead anywhere. The name of the courier service that sent the bundle of clothing to your hospital room, the recent history of the empty hand master Kailan, the brands and estimated age of the clothing that was sent, the bag, all of it. If the pattern the shroud has established holds true, all it will lead to is another example of how far they're willing to reach in order to make sure no trail leads back to them. Linda says out loud, I hate smart enemies. Chank grumps. They never fight fair. Vera sighs. Fair fights are for spars and duels, not for anything else, really. Oh, speaking of, if we're done with the investigating and thinking, can we have one now, please? Vera asks. Spar or duel? Hmm. A fight with everything but killing, or a fight with a lot of rules. Spar, please. So which one is the spar? Chank asks in a teasing tone. Everything but killing. No maiming, Linda snaps, and they have received my messages. Good. That means I can referee you fools and stop myself from becoming a widow before things are officiated and legal. Linda remarks and Chank pauses. Is something wrong? I think we should do something about that. I understand that there's usually not too much ceremony involved, but the fact you two were kicked out of the hospital room is nothing short of appalling. Oh? You want things nice and legal with this Takra Takra? Vera coos. I accept. As first wife, I will ensure that anyone that wants into the family will. I think I should take that duty. I don't think that a roving band of reformed pirates and mercenaries would be the best thing to bring into our family. Linda replies. And Chank can't help but think of just how much of the undaunted have been married to pirates and mercenaries. Oh? What makes you think that? Vera, do you really want to be the one that any request from my hand goes to? Every single time? No matter how stupid or short-sighted or just plain boring? Chank asks. And Vera pauses and there's a moment where she thinks. Can I be the one that fights off the girls that don't like hearing a no? Vera asks. Yes, Linda replies, and Vera's grin returns in full. Good. I don't have to maim you then. Come on, hubby. Time to get our blood pumping and open up some scratch marks that will spice up tonight. Vera cheers as she rushes over to Chank and grabs him before throwing him over her shoulder and pausing. The hard breastplate makes this less fun. I'd take it off, but do we really want a show in the middle of the station? Chank asks in a teasing tone. Vera's purr says, yes, yes she does. 
Linda sighs as she follows Vera, all but skipping as she carries Chank all the way to the small gym inside the precinct. There's a sparring circle inside it, and Vera tosses off her outer clothing to show just the skin-tight green and white bodysuit that she normally has underneath her mantle and cape. Chank removes his jacket, his holster, and gun. His button-up shirt is removed to reveal a hardened breastplate underneath. Under that, he has another tri-tight weave shirt. A trinity of knives are untucked from various spaces. Two more pistols from special hidden pockets. Two magazines per pistol. Two frag grenades. A smoke bomb. Three flash bombs and a puck of thermite are all set down. He then puts the detonator for the thermite into the jacket pocket and away from the puck. His boots are revealed to be armored greaves and he reaches in to show that they have a blade that can emerge out of them as he sets them aside. Anything else? Linda demands in shock. Hang on, Chenk says as he starts reaching into his pants. I know you're skilled with it, but I don't think that counts as a... Vera starts to tease him only to taper off when he pulls out a grenade launcher that has a half dozen grenades clipped to the side. But the bulge, it... Specialist Barnabas, is there something you'd like to tell us? Chief Bowman asks as she enters the room and sees the massive mound of armor and weapons he's setting down. Um, well, is this a human thing? She asks. I think it's more a highly trained soldier thing. I got my ass kicked and woke up before realizing I wasn't safe. The guns make me feel safer. They're almost all chemical-propelled kinetics, aren't they? Chief Bowman asks. Yes. The laser and plasma in the bundle are safely secured in a locked case and registered to both myself and the undaunted, Chenk says, and she sighs. Technically legal. I wish it was more than just technical, though. I don't want to hear about so much as a single bullet from those weapons being anywhere but inside the weapon while they are in this station. Our shooting range does not have the proper reinforcement for kinetics, and I'm not allowing those weapons in any spar. She says, Oh, don't worry, I'm removing them for a reason. It's a reflex for me to grab one, so I'm disarming it before I do. I don't want to actually hurt Vera. Well, outside how she would want to be hurt at any rate. I don't want to hear it. Sweet ancestors, I hear too much about my officers' love lives, as is without getting it straight from the source. But I'm a good lover, I swear. None of that. I'm married. I have daughters. I have sons. I am not playing that game with an oversized, overtrained, bloodthirsty child soldier. Is there a way for me to protest being called a child without sounding childish? Chenk asks, and he can almost hear the chief's suppressed laugh as she realizes he's only protesting the child remark. If there was one, that was it. Chief Bowman allows as she walks over to sit on a nearby incliner bench. It's currently level. I'm on break, so I suppose I have to use it to make sure you pups don't break each other. Hear that? We're not allowed to break each other, Vera taunts Chank as she stretches and shows off how flexible she is. Such a pity? That's half the fun. We'll have to make our own fun then, Chank replies, bouncing on his feet as he cracks his joints and gives his limbs a bit of a shake to loosen them up first. How did I get involved with two complete lunatics? Linda jokingly moans to the side and Chief Bowman snorts. It could be worse. One of my sister's wives is a Muffies and I've grown outright immune to static discharge waking me up in the middle of the night. The woman's cuddly, but static is a problem when fur and wool meet. Chief Bowman notes. Fair enough. All right. This is just to burn off some excess energy. So we're going for pins or a joint lock. No spilling blood, no breaking bones, and for goodness sakes, no stripping the other naked. No chank. I don't care that you're halfway there with that shirt of yours off. Your pants are staying on while in the station. Linda directs them. Yes, very true. No sex in station, please, Chief Bowman calls out. Vera huffs in annoyance. Then what's the point even? she asks, and Chank just looks upwards as if searching for answers. 
That's when Vera outright pounces on him. Unfortunately for her, he's got about 130 pounds of raw muscle and bone on her, damn near twice her body weight. And seeing as how she hadn't used any axiom, it makes the pouncing more akin to trying to tackle a brick wall, perhaps less so as a brick wall can't absorb the hit anywhere near as well than straighten up to toss you back. Might want to use the space magic there, little lady. Chank teases and Vera gives him a very put-out look. Then her entire form shifts and twists, far faster than he's used to, and a pair of gigantic paws slam into his shoulders and he's suddenly on the ground and looking into the face of a saber-toothed cat about the size of a small bus. The rumbling purr from the gigantic monster lets him know she's completely in control, closely followed by the barbed lick that, while harmless, still makes him feel like his face is about to be ripped off. So, I'd say they're about even. Chief Bowman remarks in an amused tone as Chank wiggles out from under the big cat and she bats at him a few times, never unsheathing her paws, but a cat is still a fast, muscled beast of an animal and with incredible reflexes to boot. There's a sound that would be a playful meow if it didn't come from a throat wide enough to stick your arm down and Vera in her war form makes a lunge for him. He twists in and gets his palms on her snout as she tries to bat at him with her paws. He slips in next to her head and with a roll ends up on her back. She then rolls over and then tries to jump on him when he lets go to avoid being crushed. I'm not sure if this is a deadly spar or a silly game between two overgrown children, Chief Bowman notes. Neither one's getting hurt and both are not only happy but venting excess energy. Either way, it's a win, Linda remarks as Chank continues to try the ill-advised course of action that is wrestling a Smilodon. He's making a hell of a go at it, but he just doesn't have the mass or strength to properly pin Vera. Of course, that doesn't mean that Vera is winning either. Her war form is powerful, but it's very, very hard to think in that state, and rather than out for blood, she's playful and trying not to hurt him as they play. But she doesn't have the intelligence to actually use tactics, strategy, or any kind of martial skill. Turning the spar into less of a fight and far more a man wrestling with a gigantic kitten. Oh, come on, stop licking me. Chank complains as Vera gets a solid lick on him and she wraps her front legs around him and nuzzles into his chest. He wiggles out and starts racing along her back. She twists and he jumps off and then dodges a swing of her tail as she rolls onto her back. He then reverses direction and pushes down on her side while she's on her back. Pinned ya. She tries to sweep him up but he then starts stroking along her rib cage and she starts purring. As she's distracted, Chank gives Linda a grin. Mind giving the countdown? Is that really a pin? Linda asks as she chokes back a laugh. She's helpless beneath me, Chank replies. You don't need any countdown. You've won the little play fight. Although to be fair, that was not a proper spar or duel. Chief Bowman calls out before checking the time. Hmm, that's most of my break. Ah well, this was more calming than shooting at some cathartic hollow targets anyway. Still one, Chank replies as he gives Vera a last little rub. He then takes a couple of steps so he can reach her ear and whisper into it. Change back. I won. The transformed Takra pauses and shifts upright. Then she changes back. Stark naked and quickly gathers up her now automatically repaired body stocking. It slips on fast. Hey, that wasn't fair. Taking advantage of a poor woman's softer side. Too bad. You know we're not enemies, so you don't see an enemy in war form, which means playtime, he teases. Not fair. Vera pouts with her arms crossed. Too bad, Chank says, wrapping his arms around her and giving her a gentle squeeze. That's not fair either, she says, nuzzling back into him. 